Revenge Films. This is a story about my childhood up until the age of 12. I didn't have any good memories of my childhood. Most of my memories consisted of me living in the basement and always feeling neglected and hungry. The basement was dark and damp, and there weren't any windows. It was a depressing space. There was one light bulb hanging from the ceiling. My parents only fed me once in two days, and I only got to eat their leftovers, which wasn't much. Sometimes the food they gave me was rotten, and although I devoured it, my stomach would get upset soon after. Here's your dinner. Be thankful and eat up. Yes, Mom. Thank you. I didn't know how I ended up in the basement and how long I'd been here. I had never been outside. I guess it was a problem for my mother if I died in the basement, so she continued to feed me enough food for me to live on. We lived in a rundown house, and the toilet in the basement was old and filthy. Once a week, my mother would give me a damp towel for me to wipe my body with. When you're finished with the towel, throw it away, okay? My mother would then go back up to the first floor and lock the basement. I was all alone in the basement and had no one to talk to. My mind was the only thing entertaining me. When I was a baby, I could cry a lot in the basement because I didn't know any better. Mommy, I want to go upstairs, I would say, but my mother would get angry with me. Shut up and stop crying. If you don't stop crying, I'm not going to feed you for three days. So I stopped crying. I could hear my mom laughing with the man upstairs. At first, I thought it was my father, but it was a different man each time. I knew that I would get in trouble if my mother heard me crying, too. I tried to cry as quietly as possible. The only thing I looked forward to in life was the time that my mother brought me food. Mom. What do you want? Don't call me mom. It's nothing. Sorry. Sorry. Don't talk to me. You give me the creeps. It hurt my feelings that my mother was so hostile towards me. Anytime I grew out of my clothes, my mother would give me someone's hand-me-downs to wear. She never gave me a change of clothes, so I always wore the same thing, and because I never got to wash them, my clothes reaped. During the winter, my mother gave me an old blanket with holes in it so I wouldn't freeze to death in the basement. Here, take this. It'll help you survive the winter. Then she would go back upstairs again. Even when I caught a cold and had a high fever, I didn't get any medication nor was I allowed to see a doctor so I had to fight it off on my own. Now that I'm all grown up, I'm surprised that I'm still alive. My living situation when I was a child was very harsh. One day, my mother didn't bring me any food when she was supposed to. I hadn't eaten for two days straight and I was running out of water to drink as well. I didn't hear a sound from upstairs so I called out for help. Normally, I wouldn't do that because I would get in trouble, but this was a matter of life and death for me. Mom! Mom! Where are you? She never responded. If she had heard me, she would have come down to the basement and scolded me, but she didn't. I waited for what seemed like hours, but there were still no sounds coming from upstairs. I was starving and thirsty. There was no more water for me to drink. At the time, the only person I knew was my mother because she didn't allow me to interact with anyone else. It was a strange feeling, but when my mother didn't come downstairs, I found myself missing her and I started to cry. I was hoping that someone would hear me and come to rescue me. I was starting to think that my mother had abandoned me completely. I was in deep despair. Out of desperation, I started banging on the walls with a hammer. But after a while, I didn't have any more energy left. I no longer had the power to scream or cry. I was either going to die in this basement or a miracle was going to take place and someone was going to rescue me from this miserable place. I lay on the basement floor waiting for my fate. I felt dizzy from hunger and thirst, but then a light shone from the ceiling. Hey! There's a child down here! Help me get her out! I had never seen this man before and he was with a woman. You're safe now. We're so happy that you're alive. We were so worried about you. The man looked around the dirty basement and frowned. He must have realized that I was locked in the basement for a very long time. Have you seen my mom? No, I haven't. She's gone now. I'm going to make sure that nothing bad happens to you from now on. Who are you? I work at the Child Consultation Center. Basically, I help young children like yourself. I didn't quite understand his explanation. But if I didn't get out of here, I wasn't going to make it. And the man seemed nice, so I decided to trust him. This was the first time in my life that I was leaving the basement. I was surprised by how bright the first floor of the house was. Do you remember how long you've been living in the basement? No, I don't. Your mother is a terrible person for doing this to you. 
I could see tears in the man's eyes. The man was able to rescue me from the basement because a neighbor had heard me banging on the basement walls and called the police. I was so grateful to this person because if she hadn't done that for me, I may not be alive today. When the police went through my mother's trash, they discovered my old clothes being thrown out. That's when the police asked someone from Child Consultation Center to check the house. After I was rescued by the Child Consultation Center, one of the staff asked me a lot of questions about the life that I had with my mother. The nice man who found me in the basement was by my side reassuring me the whole time. The people at the Child Consultation Center told me that I would never have to see my mother again, and that instead, I was going to move into a child care facility. I had no idea what that was, but I decided to trust their words and that it was going to be a better place than the basement that I used to live in. I found this out later, but the people working at the Child Consultation Center did a lot of investigation on my mother. One day, a young woman came to visit me at the child care facility. Hello, it's nice to meet you. May I have your name, please? I don't know. The woman seemed shocked that I didn't even know my own name. I'm actually your mother's younger sister, which makes me your aunt. I know that you've been living at this facility for some time now. I was wondering if you are interested in moving out of the facility and living with me. You don't need to decide right away. I know that this is a big decision for you. My mother's sister? I understand if you don't want to live with me. I know that my sister was a terrible mother to you. I'm not afraid of you. You seem nice. I'd like to move in with you. I finally understood that my real mother had abandoned me. I was 12 years old at the time and I still needed an adult to take care of me. I made a leap of fate and decided to move in with my aunt. My aunt filled out some adoption papers and officially welcomed me into her family. Nobody knew where my mother had disappeared to and the police were looking for her. Once I arrived to my aunt's house, I was surprised to see how clean and beautiful everything was. My aunt had given me my own bedroom and filled my closet with some nice clothes. My aunt was married, but they didn't have any kids. She introduced me to her husband, who seemed very nice as well. They told me that they both loved kids, but my aunt was having some health issues, which didn't allow her to have children of her own. My aunt and her husband were thrilled and happy to adopt me as their daughter. It was the man from the child consultation center that had discovered that my mom had a younger sister, and he reached out to her and explained to her about my situation. She felt bad about what happened to me and wanted to make it up to me by adopting me. We are so happy to have you as part of our family. Thank you for agreeing to live with us. By what name would you like for us to call you? I don't know my name because my mother never told me. My uncle seemed really sad for me when he heard this. We found out later that my mother hadn't even registered my birth. On paper, I didn't exist. In the end, the three of us talked it over and decided that my new name would be Helen. I was really happy to have a name and to have people call me by it. My aunt taught me the basic things about life so I could adapt to my new life. Things like taking a bath, using the toilet, and using the kitchen to prepare simple meals. Once I learned to do all of those things, she enrolled me into a nice school near her house. I had no idea life could be so fun. I loved my new life with my aunt and uncle, and the food that my aunt made for me every day was extremely delicious. I was so grateful. When we had the time, my aunt would bake cookies and cakes with me, and I loved her so much. A few months after I moved in with my aunt and uncle, my aunt told me that my mother had been arrested. My mother had been abusing me for several years and she wasn't going to be released from prison anytime soon. My aunt went to see her sister in jail and asked her why she abused me. My mother admitted that she had gotten pregnant and barely knew the father, and not knowing what to do, she locked me in the basement. She took all her stress out on me. My mother was a serial dater and dated many losers. One day, she found a man that was willing to marry her, but then the police tracked her down and she was arrested for child abuse. I was young and didn't know how to be a good mother. I did the best that I could. I don't know why I need to be arrested. The man that my mother had married divorced her as soon as he found out that she had a daughter and had been abusing me for many years. My mother was found guilty on all charges of child abuse. She was going to be locked up for a very long time and I was relieved to know this. After receiving real love from my aunt and uncle, I realized just how bad my mother had treated me and I wasn't going to forgive her ever. Over the years, I've come to consider my aunt and uncle as my real mother and father. They always treated me like their own, and I was beyond thankful. I'm currently attending my final year of university. Once I graduate, I plan on getting a stable job so I can repay my aunt and uncle for everything that they have done for me.
I'm planning on saving up so I can treat them to a nice vacation. That's the least I could do for them. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.